good day to you i want to bring a short discussion to you this saturday evening on a chance or choice life on the potter's wheel or as a blob of clay jetsam flotsam doing life as we please uh the issue comes us uh, comes to us again because of the present covid trouble and the uncertainty that has come to systems systems that so, sometime back was so sure so we have shifted for the last two day two two generations for nearly for 80 years the uh, the scientific system was a system that was considered the game player Uh, so i want to uh, bring you some thoughts about a generation that would be arising and has arisen here are the features of the generation i'll read to you there is a generation that diminishes his father and does not bless his mother so i am positing to you this change came maybe 60 years ago when family was not the strongest focus or binding force or driving force on earth in society so i am using this allegory that family is the potter's wheel and dad and mom uh, this an old allegory potter's wheel potter's wheel uh, so that the old potter man who worked with clay would take the clay out and keep it on his potter's wheel and he sometimes works the potter's wheel with a foot driven mechanism and the wheel keeps changing or else with one hand if his both hands are free it is easier so when would someone agree Uh, to this kind of choice i'll rather be a blob of clay being fashioned and designed for a life purpose so they are, we are now talking of purpose so we are now talking of ontos the origin telios the end and the cosmos how we do it in between so that uh, that is the threefold definition of purpose the origin ontos the end result telios i'm using some uh, old greek words and then the in between the cosmos the the thing about cosmology is not only about planets and stars how it works how we understand it works so getting it simple uh, about 60 years ago began the dim- diminution of dad and mom now it began with d- dad and mom they lost value for their primary call in life parenthood primary call in life is parenthood so career is what we are paid for calling is what we are made for i'll repeat it career is what we are paid for and we are happy that we are paid for the career we chose and the profession we do but calling is what we are made for so you can have a situation our career is arising but our calling is diminishing or putting it sideways our career is advancing more and more away from our calling calling goes like that career goes like that greater the dichotomy greater the distance between calling and career more distress frustration we will have not only on the long term even on the short term and the mid term so i'm positing the theory there is a potter's wheel executed or or made to work by parents on which everyone is meant to be a dis a a a, a blob of clay comes over quite happily to blob of clay from outside comes over quite happily to be the to be designed made into the shape of the potter's wheel uh, so the potter's wheel shapes you and the main ingredient of the potter's wheel was parenthood as we experience in home 
So if, if a generation arises who, who diminish their father and who do not bless their mother. So you can see that the fracture is more with the father, fisticuffs, more with the father and less with the mother. But I would suggest that by about 1990, father fracture that has been occurring from 1960, caught up with the mother also. By 1990, uh, many moms were working out of home, working out of the country in our nation, Sri Lanka, and in many other nations. And mom also abdicated the potter's wheel. Got my theory, concept? Initially, dad did it rather early because for him, corporate, profession, career, money making became primary in life and little bit of his very late little bit of life at the end of the day he was able to put to the potter's wheel and the potter's wheel is the environment or the mechanism that goes to shape the life of everybody so potter's i'm using the hand potter's wheel if you if you work with god thumb will be the potter's wheel if you don't work with God, it will be what you most passionately believe in. And human beings will believe in something most passionately. And if it be, means survival of the fittest and struggle for existence, that, that will be our belief. Or by hook or by crook, that will be our belief. Uh, that uh, Hitler made Germany to believe that Aryans are the super race and everything should be driven for Aryan supremacy and that became their religion or that became their zealotry z-e-a-l-o-t-r-y uh, so i'm pitching the potter's wheel as the most important fashioning uh, device mechanism to which you subject yourself so i have already suggested uh, mom and dad and parentage parenting is the most important thing then it gets extended into education because uh, some time back, particularly in our language, we said guru de guru. Uh, so uh, there was parent and going to school for education was extension of home. Uh, in all Asian cultures it was so. Even, even, uh, even until about 1990 maybe, uh, school was second home. We, we agreed to that. So there was a potter's wheel. A, a father figure, mother figure, the senior, the benefactor who laid their life down for the protege or the beneficiary. That's how schools and education functioned for a long time till education became a very prosperous business. So now loans are given to uh, university students and in Western countries more than half their life they are paying the student loans that they acquired during university days. Now, thankfully in Sri Lanka, we have free education. Our students don't have to get into uh, loans and debt for it. Uh, as a result, they have no value for it also. So we have seen when university is on, students are on the road placarding, pro, uh, in procession, in protesting, and the police chasing behind them and wasting water for them to have a bath on the road and they have lost in the medical faculties nearly uh, one and a half years of term time because of protesting for this, that and the other. So education was also part of the potter's wheel. Then we come to the third part of it, uh, the, the university system or the vocational professional system where we had great role models, the senior parenting the junior in the profession. I will never forget my days with Professor Dharmadas in the Colombo Medical Faculty. The present Professor of Medicine was intern at that time. In, in that system, when, uh, when, when we first did the local qualification, the local MD, and we did IMRCP and we went abroad, in that system, we had only one clinical registrar in our ward, and that was me. We had two professors and we had senior lecturers and we, we never forget the training we got as we come to the ward, the things we have to do. We, we have to go look at the stools of the patient if that is important for clinical diagnosis. I had to be in the ward at 
do the award run before prof comes, get the, you know, with the interns and get the interns ready and so on. Just give you a picture, gave you a picture of what medical profession used to be and we were taught around the bedside and every day there would be a ward round and often I had to do uh, clinical lecture demonstrations right in the ward, in the ward tutorial room uh, and then, you know, a lot of stuff like that. All I'm saying is the potter's wheel, so the, the, the potter's wheel also always had uh, the senior looking after the junior in a patriarchal kind of or matriarchal kind of uh, society. So those are the three formative potter's wheel or part of the potter's wheel we went through. So we said, I said there would be either God or whatever that directs the potter's wheel that you subject yourself to. Then there would be the people that are most influential, the forefinger in your life. And then there would be the colleagues that are most influential, the peers that are most influential in your life. Then this finger I use for uh, all the most difficult things your personality had that the potter's wheel needed to take care of carefully. And then uh, the little finger I call it the, the I call it compassion. Uh, that is to say, it's a little thing. It can get into any little thing. So here is a potter's wheel. So the first part of it is that we understood that there is a generation that would arise that will have no heed for the potter's wheel. They they will choose to live as they please. Uh, so here 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 is my model. So I we, we are clay. And if, we, if our choice is to be on the potter's wheel, there comes a time in our life, in our life journey, the clay will gather rocks and roots. To the extent we gather rocks and roots, our life becomes useful or useless. That, that is to say, if rock, pieces of rock and pieces or, and roots are increasing in your clay, then you will not become a vessel in the potter's wheel, in the potter's hand. So there comes a time in our life we feel enough of rocks and enough of roots. Let me find a purpose for my life in which I can function as the potter's wheel. In the potter's wheel, by choice, what there is for my life. So some lives get wasted because there are rocks and there are roots got uh, too entangled and they couldn't be available for anything else. They, the, their life purpose got completely jarred, completely obfuscated. So I want to package this through carefully. Now, when we come on the potter's wheel, an easy example is you become, let's say, a brick. You might become a vessel like that to hold water, or you may become an ornamentary pottery, or you become a brick for a building. So when you are a brick for a building, uh, this is the way I like to explain it, there will be those who have gone before you, so you rest your life on them. Pardon me for my uh, sort of ad hoc uh, demonstrations. demonstrations. So these are our seniors who took our weight. Dad, mom, those who trained us took our weight. Then our time comes to take the weight of others. On, on us. We take the weight of others on us. Then there are people who have gone ahead of us. They did better than us or their influence is more than us. They might be our role models. We, we don't have to get jealous of them. We might take an example from them. Then there are others who are behind us in life and, uh, and God's purpose is if I bring God to it, There'll be always people behind us. There'll be always people ahead of us. Don't get jealous of those who are ahead of us. And don't oppress those who are behind us. You know, we never try to oppress the powerful. Only a fool tries it. We oppress those who are less than us. About the powerful, we will protest from far. But we will certainly uh, fan and flatter them when we are close at hand. That's how human nature goes. So those who are ahead of us, uh, we better get their example and learn from them. 
and those who are behind us, we need to help them on. That's how life is made, in the potter's wheel. Then on our right hand side, there are chaps who are just like us, we like them, it's very nice company and so on. And in the potter's wheel, on our left hand side, there are chaps who are just unlike us and they are rough. Uh, that is good for us because they sharpen us and they make us smooth. So don't, uh, don't, don't, uh, dis be, don't be disparaging or discard those or don't try to avoid those who are unlike us in our life journey on the potter's wheel uh, that they do a necessary part. So I want to read a little more keeping in mind this potter's wheel. So there was a time, there needs to be a time when we say uh, it is time I give myself to the potter's wheel. So the best in my life may come out. This is my, uh, this is where God enters my life where I could have had a lot of rocks and roots of my intellectual arrogance and because of knowledge, who cares? Who, we are, I know more than anybody else, you know. Uh, for some it may be power, for some it may be money, for some it may be knowledge, for some it may be just playing with sex or whatever that is attractive in them. For me, it was knowledge. Uh, always my knowledge was at, at the highest level uh, possible that I could acquire in whatever subject. So I thought for in, during that period of my life, I thought I don't need anybody because I have knowledge. Uh, thankfully, I have to say thank God that changed and I learned to be a blob of clay made on the potter's wheel with a design, with a purpose. There seems to have been a God scope, a God mandate, a God calendar for someone's life. So that's called choice. Chance is take it as it comes. Rocks, roots, take it as it comes. There is no designed potter's wheel. I'll take it as it comes, the roller coaster. So the two options, potter's wheel, roller coaster. So on the uh, potter's wheel, you'll be brought to book. You will be, you'll have to be accountable. You will believe in what you sow, you will reap. Kaladi, uh, Paladi. Yes. Singhala proverbs are far more evocative and I'm very thankful we, we were trained in a school that did our languages, both single English and, and Tamil, uh, very well. So most of us who have gone through that school, St. Thomas's College, is equally bilingual. We are very thankful for that. And Singhala proverbs are very, very powerful, you know. Kaladu to Kalawala Higanda, that is opportunism. Make hay while the sunshine. So, so there are many things like that. Life on the potter's wheel uh, and life on a roller coaster. You don't know what comes but I will I will take it as it comes. Uh, the, the ulat, in, in Singhala you say Uleng ho pilen, ke king ho koke. That's how that goes. So, but I want to get to the description a little more about life on the roller coaster as different to life on a potter's wheel which has a design which means there are, there's a season the wheel turns it comes to nine o'clock you are getting ready for a new thing it goes to midday what in your effort the, uh, the in your effort the most vigorous then it comes to sundown for you to look back and see look back and see how 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 the vigor what did the vigor do in this season of my life then you come to home base, using baseball language, and you cool off. And then again, uh, the season of exercise, this comes, you know. Uh, so I was just listening to a clip today about those who were born in 1900. In 1914, they got the First World War. So now 14 years is like the First World War. And then by 1919, they got Spanish flu. By 1929, they got the Great Depression. 1933, at the age of 33, you got Nazi. You become a Nazi, you, you know, or you get crucified like Jesus Christ. It was quite an interesting comparison how the ages play off. So at 1939, the Second World War, you know, when you're approaching 39 and the naughty 40s, another kind of world war begins. The 1945, uh, some kind of truce, the United Nations and so on. So it was quite an interesting comparison of the seasons of life, which tallies well with my model of the potter's wheel. 
So one can consider it 1 to 14. 14 to 21 is more rapid than 21 to, you know, you get what I mean. So you got the idea that we keep doing and then we have a, a evening tide, even time of consideration, uh, look back, check back, and a little, re you are not all the time vigorous, you are not the signature of every eye, there's a rest time, and then you start off again. There's the potter's wheel of choice, then there's a roller coaster life of chance. Let come what may, I take it like that. Uh, now, I strongly believe in the potter's wheel of choice. God is involved with you. Yeah. So, here are other features of the generation. There is a generation who is pure in their own eyes and not washed from filthiness. You, we know that this change came, uh, that anything goes. So, any kind of sex goes, any kind of earning goes. Uh, however you treat your parents, it's okay. Uh, and then the elders are not considered in society. Uh, so this is uh, pure. So you became the measure of your own doing, the roller coaster life, okay? Whereas in the potter's wheel, you are brought to book. You are brought to accountability. Then comes, uh, there is a kind, there is a generation, or oh, how lofty are their eyes and eyelids are raised in arrogance. So here is the potter's wheel. You have a measure of things. But in the roller coaster life, you can be high and jump as much as you can to catch it all. Of course, the crash is also possible. So the roller coaster life is eyes are lofty, eyelids are raised up, always to the next, to the next, and to the next. These days, they have gone to mass while earth is in such great agony and we need all the funds to rebuild the world after covid but they have taken off to mass uh, because that's a roller coaster life there is a generation whose teeth are like swords whose jaw teeth like knives so that brings us to the very rabid uh, social media kind of communication with uh, no accountability no give and take it's like real, real gladi gladiatorial, you know, it's, it's a real sword fight, fisticuffs, uh, no giving in, a jaw teeth like knives, and kind of uh, a generation whose teeth are like swords. Uh, I must tell you again, uh, the, the digital screen, cartoons, push children to that. Uh, so you need to care, be careful about the social, social changes that come. And uh, dopamine driven, and electric Electronic cocaine is the name used for uh, UCLA articles for uh, digital addiction because I have told you this before in my digital talks, uh, if you like to get onto those digital science talks, that dopamine it never comes down when you are into that kind of life. Uh, so whereas life on the potter's wheel have, have a way of uh, going on, you, you do dopamine and then serotonin comes to check up how you did it and then melatonin happens at 6 p.m. and GABA, the empathic neurochemical transmitter that gives you the feeling that sense that wasn't right. I need to put right, I need to say sorry. That is, I have told you this before, we are spirit, heart, conscience, the umpire. Then we have our emotions, emotions. Then we have our big brain. So all these chemicals are here. But there are other things that work in us towards it. So GABA is a very necessary uh, neurochemical transmitter that brings to us that feeling of, I, I, I didn't do it right. Uh, and then we want to say sorry. So as I said, it's not only neurochemical transmitters, but in the roller coaster life, it is all dopamine, dopamine, adrenaline, cortisol. Yeah, mm, 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 so you understand. So this is a more chronobiologically woven, uh, harmonized life. Then we have, there's a generation uh, who devour the afflicted, the poor from the earth, the, the disadvantaged from the earth, and the needy from among men. So you can see that the immunologically disadvantaged die in COVID. I'll repeat it. Immunologically disadvantaged die in COVID. What if all the flu shots are ruining our immunity? 
That's my professional assessment. I'll repeat it. Flu shots are ruining our immunology and the immunologically disadvantaged were the ones who died in COVID. In Sri Lanka, because we get BCG and we don't get flu shots, uh, we are doing quite okay, though the present COVID cluster, uh, now the brandy cluster is quite, uh, quite contained reasonably, but the secondary clusters, some are large, they have to be contained. So now the, the epidemiological theory is not R rate, but the K rate, meaning uh, how soon a cluster forms. So if there's a long distance from the major cluster, long time, longer time period to form the next cluster, and how is it, how is it spreading in the second cluster? How is it uh, spreading in the third generation cluster? So that's how the epidemiology goes. So that's by the way. So I'm positing this to you. There are plans already underway to devour, to destroy the afflicted from the earth and the needy from among men. Because in the potter's wheel, we take all together. The infants, the youth, the thriving, not so thriving, medically disadvantaged, the handicapped, Down syndrome, uh, everyone we take together. Third world countries, first world countries, if there's a fourth world, fourth world countries, we take all together. So more you meddle with vaccines, the more immunologically compromised we will be, more susceptible to diseases and pandemics we will be. Yes. If you want a little more of it, I will, please send me uh, a request. I'm Dr. Lyad Mendes. I speak from Sri Lanka, Colombo. My last post was as head of Department of Pharmacology in a state medical faculty and my uh, telephone number or WhatsApp number is plus 9477495214. But I have some more material to get through. Uh, so here is the next one. Uh, so this is about, I'm uh, making a point in the, in the potter's wheel. We carry them all together. Parents look after children and then when children are able, they look after parents. So potter's wheel has a beginning point and a return we start again, of course I am speaking about this life and the seasons of life. And I am saying that Potter's will may be ultimately, God's hand may be undergirding that kind of thought process and character style and a lifestyle. Whereas the roller coaster one is survival of the fittest. Might is right. More competition the better it is. Whereas the Potter's will is a complementation all included in the life circumstances and, and our idea is not to exclude people but increasingly the post-covid world will look to exclude the um, unfit that's what's happening yes uh, so then verse 50, uh, the, we are coming to the next character of of this generation uh, th there'll be a generation that, that's like leech that says give 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 they are never satisfied. So consider that. Uh, on, on this side, we have a potter's wheel. We are working together. Uh, so we, we have a sense of uh, initiate, navigate, uh, successful conclusion, well rewarded. On the other side, whatever your summit is, there's another summit. Whatever the target, there's another one. Higher one, better one. You go for it. And in this ascending conveyor belt, human beings become the ball bearings. Can you understand that? Human beings become the ball bearings. And it's a game of elimination. As you go higher, so 100 people begin the journey, and when you come to level one, 50 get eliminated, and then, but all were helping each other. So you come to a point that, you know, the Orwellian struggle, uh, animal farm thing, and then ultimately the top dogs are eliminating the lesser ones and then who will be the topmost is the kind of thing where economics is going, where science is going, where medical science is going, which we did not think would be so. So there is a generation that never says enough. Then there's a generation that mocks the father, scorns the mother and a raven spirit 
operating in them. So I have a list of things about the raven spirit and we'll be done. Uh, what is, uh, so the ravens make a lot of sound, like in the social media, pardon me for saying this, it's all the time throwing things at each other and it's, a, it's always uh, this camp versus that camp and ravens don't seem to have a leader, so everybody is a leader. They are leading the cacophony, they are uh, leading the raucous sounds and they are leading the rubbish and the whole day they are roaming. There is not a time the raven is quiet and he's always dealing in rubbish. And he's dealing in fake science, fake knowledge, and um, attacking each other. There's a lot of sound. So that's the raven spirit. Uh, gossip is like refuse. Uh, so the social media carries a whole lot of slander, unverified slander. Recently I saw one against one of our famous cricketers. Nobody bothered to ask him, was that true? But it is going on in the social media. Why is that? Because those who have a, have something to grind, uh, some axe to grind with that person, will take it up with even with unverified slander. And you know that you can use truth for slander or you can use untruth for slander. But it's slander at the end of it. Especially when a man can't defend himself, it's true or otherwise it's slander. Uh, so there's much crowing, protest, competition, as ravens do, fighting for their market position, as ravens do, roam around with the dissatisfied with their eye, as ravens do, increasingly blind uh, and, and consuming anything uh, that is manufactured or that is available. So I tried to give a picture of the potter's wheel, the life of choice where you say, yes, God has a scope for me, this blob of clay will fit the vessel that I was designed to be, career-wise, uh, 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 your volume-wise, your capacity-wise. Some lives may influence, as I said this before, just your family. That's a great influence. You do it well for your kids, that's a great influence. You launch a son, you launch a daughter, who can uh, one day serve you back and serve their career, serve their portion out of life, in a vessel on the potter's wheel. That's the life of choice. The role of host to life is, it's only your advance, it is only your selfish gain, there is no give back. You understand the roller coaster? It keeps going. This unending roller coaster. God didn't design life that. That we can assess the damage it has caused and what, may, what can we do in a post-COVID world to get it back together to the Thank you for listening. I hope this allegory was useful. Thank you.